I'm Nick, um, otherwise known as DJ D Kind. This is Greg, otherwise known as Wizard. And this is Deep Nasty, otherwise known as Geek Nasty. Today we're going to show you a track we've made and we're going to run you down on how it was produced. And Greg's going to show you his fine vocal production techniques along with Deep Nasty's yeah, deep, deep, man. Uh, singing, singing qualities as well. Oh yeah, that as well. So we're just going to run you through the arrangement, um, like a track at a time, and show you how we built the song together. We start off with the drums, of course, which is a kick. Everything is audio, um, pretty much, apart from the bass, which is coming off an ESX as a sample, like an 808 sound. Um, I'm using audio because I t tend to trust it a bit more. I think it's, you get a tighter production, and you can really... Um, stop your drums exactly where you want them to stop to leave space in your mix and I find when you're running a lot of tracks together the audio just is seems to be a lot more tighter than, than I found with MIDI. We noticed there's quite a few clicks on here um, when we went about this track we wanted to keep it quite kind of like lo-fi production so we've kind of nothing's been overly um, produced, produced yeah. um, because we wanted to give it a feel of like a lot of similar tracks that were coming around at, at the, the time we made it and it was kind of quite of a quick far away attitude to making music but listening back to it all these little imperfections is what gave the song the character so we kind of went about it a, a bit faster and um, less attention to detail but but what you'll probably find is that even though some of the sounds don't sound great on their own when they're all put together it as a whole it, it works really well the first of all We've got a kick drum, and that's going for a basic EQ where we're rolling off a bit of the bottom end to leave room for the sub, which is on another track. And then we've distorted it slightly just to. It's another way of compressing stuff by using distortion, and you can adjust the tone as well. That's just going to rough the sample up a bit. And after that, we've got a multi presser, which is a multi band compressor, and that's a good way of limiting your sound because it's actually limiting three bands separately and I sometimes use these to EQ stuff because you can just drag for example a bit of mid out but that mid is being compressed to however much you want to compress it so you can really shape the sound with that. Next is a trigger track which I'll tell you about later. The next track is a hat track. This is just one of a few hat parts we've got. Make it up the top end. So that's actually um, a sample that's actually got reverb on it and what we're doing to that, we're just using this EQ and we're pretty much taking out all the frequencies that aren't necessary just to give more space like frequency wise for the other, other parts in the mix down. So if we put the analyzer on we'll be able to see where the hat's hitting and what I've basically done, just basically pulled down anything below the frequencies that aren't hitting and take a little bit off the top there um, and what we can do I can play the other two top end parts we've got this crunk part that's being compressed with a low cut on it the low cut's taking out the sub a Miami bass loop which we've just taken out the sub by using a low cut at about 900 hertz if you wanted to know that and kind of more of a busy break loop also back on that hat is an Enigma plugin and what this does is it just adds a bit of width and a bit of sparkle just kind of makes the loop a bit more interesting I can play it just find it's good sometimes just to add a little bit of don't know, just something a bit random onto your sounds so that when they're in the mix it's just a, it's a bit more interesting to listen to because you've, it's got that random element applied to it so it's not, it doesn't sound like it's coming straight out of a computer <laughs> helps it all gel together basically and then we've got the clap. Now that clap I didn't use any effects on because I, I really like the sound 
and we wanted it to cut through the mix so if I was to compress that sound it wouldn't kind of cut through well enough so the trick with that is just to layer it in the drums and just balance the level so that comes through nice. you'll probably find if you turn the mix up really loud that clap you've got to have it so it's just about hurts your ears and then you just duck it down slightly and you've pretty much got a good level on that um, after that we've got what's this symbols yeah symbols I always go with samples with crashes like of real kind of rock drums because I just find that they're usually well recorded and there's a lot more character to, to something that's been synthesized and I've used a little different symbol in there like a china crash like a drum might a drummer might play if you hear them in the wrong, wrong context and you don't put them all together in the right way they could sound like a horrible mess because there's so much going on if you can apply like what Greg's done the right EQ to everything and give it its own space you can create a really nice banging groove out of it all just before the drums come in on the next track down here we've got a white noise and that's basically like a riser into the next section and uh, what we've done with that we've had a white noise sample of just off a synth which was in a previous arrangement and used auto filter just an open to cut off just to make it uh, the top end get more and more as it gets towards the end and I've stuck that through a plugin called Mondo Mod, and that's an auto panner plugin. If you can see, it's going left and right. Right. The good thing about having it panning from side to side is that you can make it quieter in your mix down and leave more uh, room to have your beats loud, and you can still hear it because the fact that it's panning, it's a lot more noticeable. If that panner was turned off, we'd have to have it a lot louder in the mix and it's not necessarily that important that we'd want to, want to do that so what we can do, we can subtly have it in the track like and um, it gives them basically the mix a lot of space after the um, white noise build up we've just got a single snare hit and what I wanted to, for this is to be like quite loud and uh, aggressive but um, at the same time, I didn't want it to affect the cut of the record, so what I've done with this is I've put two limiters on it um, and just basically hit it quite hard into the limiter, and so it's being double limited, and that basically means it's like a, it's brick walled it, so that sound is never, um, it's got no peaks to it, it's completely flat, but probably sharp as a square waveform. But that just means that it's not. You can have it quite loud. If I hit it too hard with one limiter, you'd notice it would sound a bit odd. But you can kind of get a good level with one limiter, and then the second one you can just tidy it up a little bit more with a second limiter. Um, tri you, basically, you think of it as like that's a sample you've taken off a record. You're limiting it, and then you're almost like resampling it again and using that second limiter to limit the sample, which is a limited snare. Um, I just wanted it to be totally flat. So in other words, it's a limited edition snare. Special limited edition snare drum. Right, next thing we've got a, a snare, I think that's, that's an 808 snare. Mm. And again we're using samples for that. They're sampled off the original drum machine because I just think it sounds a lot better than a lot of these 808 sounds that have been synthesised. That, that drum machine's responsible for that a whole era of music which Nick's a big fan of so we just went straight to the source and got the original sounds and we've been using them in our productions what I've done with this sound, I've got an EQ I've taken off some of that harsh top end because I want to leave space for the hi-hats and then again there's an overdrive which is being used to compress it and also dirty the sound up so it's not a totally clean sound It's just. I think by adding a bit of dirt to all these sounds, if they've all got a bit of like grunge dirt kind of attached to them, like either given through overdrives or distortions, or like we did at the beginning by having clicks on it, um, when they're all put together, that it kind of helps gel them together. Right, we're getting up to the bass line here, and this was 
basically an 808 kick that's been detuned to make a bass line. You can hear the sample there. It's a kind of a really round sine wave type tone. And what we did with this, normally I'm a fan of keeping it round, like in its original form, because I think the, the bass projects better on a club system if you do that. But um, with uh, this particular song, what we did with it, we wanted it to be a bit more trashy. So what we've done with the 808 here is we've um, distorted it, compressed it, and limited it, and EQ'd it by the looks of it. So it sounds like this now. It's got a lot more um, compression going on, you can hear it for sure. Well, the first thing I've put on there is a channel EQ, but all I've been using that for is to turn the gain up to make it louder. Um, so when it goes into the multi-presser here, it's getting more compression applied to it. You can see that. Um, I think originally when I put the multi-presser on, um, I've messed around with it and I thought I'd gain it into there a little bit. Um, we've also then got an EQ after that, after compression, and that's just bringing out about 520 hertz, which is not particularly low, but it kind of means that it hits your chest. It, it kind of suited the sound, that EQ. Uh, that's followed by a limiter, which is limiting it um, as much as you possibly can. And that's kind of probably, in some respects, is going to bring down that frequency bump and bring up everything around it, just because of the due to the amount of limiting on it. But that's what sounded good. And that is followed by a clip distortion. The reason being to stick distortion on this sound was so that um, when it's played on a small system, you can still hear the 808, because such a, a low sound, you, you need a pretty good pair of speakers or a club environment to hear it, but what this does is it adds distortion, so even when it's really quiet, you can kind of hear like the fuzz on top, so you know there's something there. This sound we're up to next was something we sampled for a different song, and it, we never used it, and we thought it might work in this mix, and pretty, I think it was you and Freak Nasty come across, across yeah. it originally. It's from a record I got from Baltimore. It's about probably ten years old, I reckon. But it's got a nice grit to it. It was one of the first things we we kind of put in the arrangement, like with the drums at the beginning. And if you hear it, it's like. So what we did with this sound was we compressed it with the Logic compressor. There's another compressor after that, but the second compressor is uh, being sidechained from track 12. Now track 12, if we play track 12, this is what a track 12 is. It's a 4-4 kick on every beat, basically. The output of this channel is turned to off, which means when you play the song, you don't hear what that kick's doing, but in terms of what, how it's controlling the compression, our compressor here is compressing it on every kick, and that's making the sample pump in the mix. So it's almost jumping out on every offbeat slightly. This kind of helps it sit in the mix a bit better, and it's kind of ducks it at the beginning of each bar, which is where the drums are hitting, makes more space for the beats. I've also got on this sound a sample delay, and what I'm doing with this is that I'm just delaying the right and left side by different amounts, which so I've added a 250 millisecond delay to the right hand side, so it's actually coming out the left speaker first and the right speaker second, and that's going to make your sample sit really wide in the stereo mix which also means you can bring down the volume again because it's like literally having one in the left speaker, one in the right speaker and if you keep your beats in the middle it's going to help you get more space in your mix downs. The next part we've got is it's just a hype part which I think is very important um, and it's just a yeah, I think it's a, it says yeah or go, 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 Vocalist was very consistent when we recorded that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? 
<laughs> deep nasty. <laughs> And then what we've got else over this section is basically DJ Assault's vocals, but what we've done is we've put them in the ESX. So I'll have a quick look at that if you go if we go through that, we can just hear Brand I'm up just been ordered chopped up haters um bip to to just means we can play around with them so to do this kind of effect. Pushing, push, 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 pushing, 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 one of which was Freak Nasty's um, performance, if we can call it, a, call it a performance. This was um, done live by Freak Nasty and he was, um, he was just doing some beatboxing and rapping at the time and then he stumbled across a loop. A new technique. A new technique and then um, we just recorded it in because yeah. we thought it sounded pretty it cool. Was when you could do that pop sound with yeah. the, with, by hitting the side of your cheek, so it's what it sounded like. And we did a really cool effect on this to make it stand out in the mix. First of all, we used a limiter. And that's got real heavy limiting on it. So literally every part of that sound, we could hear it. Even the quiet stuff is now as loud as the loud stuff. Then we overdrive, put another overdrive over it. That's basically another form of us limiting it. That's followed by a reverb. Uh, but it was still quite a bit bassy, so we put a low cut on it. And then after that, it was an EQ to bring out um, kind of the roundness. And then that sits in the trap. Not a platinum black, but I done blew a million. Had chicks, that's Brazilian. If I mute the vocal, you'd be able to hear that about. And you can also hear like a bit of the headphones spill from where his headphones are on because of the amount of compression going on. I don't think that's a bad thing because it all. fills out a nice space in the mix. I think it's these little imperfections that make the tracks um, are much more easier to listen to. This almost adds like a, a kind of a radio effect for when we stick the vocal in as well. Not a platinum black, but I done blew a million. Had chicks, that's Brazilian. Speaking Portuguese, you would think I was royalty. How they treat me overseas. I can now we move on to the, the main hook, uh, musical hook of the track. And this started off from a, a guitar sample, which was like a single guitar note. We split it across the ESX24. Uh, it's just a chord, and we played it on different notes to make the melody. So it sounds like this. <laughs> You'll hear where the sound's looping at the end of the sample. That was because the sample um, was quite a short sample <coughs> and we were playing it for a couple of bars, it would run out. So what we did, we basically put a loop point on the chord. So you can see it basically, that's the chord and then this green part is where it's looping. Basically the way I chose the loop point and the size of it was to what how I thought it sounded best musically in the mix. So I just thought it was quite a rhythmic way to loop that part. Um, we also doubled that up with another. It's also like a synthesized guitar sound, um, which was in the ESX. And basically that's filling out extra frequencies that the first one was perhaps lacking and just fattened up the sound. And that's also doubled up by a synth part. Which is playing kind of a 
harmony parts. subtle but um, we usually listen to it with and without the parts in and decide does it warrant being in or does it not warrant being in and I think those three parts kind of just work really nicely together. Other elements on the chorus section are is the synth lead basically. Um, this was made using an FM8, I think we used pre two preset sounds together and blended them so we've got like before, they're pretty, pretty useless sounds. That I wouldn't tend to use these in most cases. But when they're together, they sound a bit better, and they just seem to work over the guitars. Because with everything in, you just pick up on the melody of the part. So the sound quality was not necessarily that important. What I did with these. I sent them both to a group, I compressed them and I did a very rough um, EQ which is just taking out some of the lower frequencies and boosting the tops, that's kind of where the audible range that, that I wanted to hear is in the, in the higher frequencies, so I just kind of got rid of anything unnecessary again. Um, and then after that we've got the vocals and of course like things like a bomb. <laughs> kind of just does what a crash cymbal does in a lot of respects, just kind of helps introduce sections of the tracks, um, Westwood style. And then we got, um, the, we got the vocals, with these I put them through a pitch shifter in a previous arrangement and they've been bounced just because I was really happy with the sound, I just wanted to render it as an audio file and keep it simple as I progressed. Um, it's a brand new year, all the haters stand clear. That's kind of been chopped quite hard at the beginning and the end, so you can see so it sounds more like a sample. Um, when I pitched it down, um, it added quite a bit more bass into it. So what I've done is I've used uh, like a corrective EQ to kind of just cut off a lot of the bottom end on that sample and just bring through the diction in his voice, where I'd be boosting some of the upper mids a bit. It's already been EQ'd, but I've EQ'd it a second time and just brought out about um, kind of a wide frequency band around 5k um, and then that vocal works around the other vocal which Brand is new here. I'ma keep it pushing All the haters stand clear I'ma keep it pushing The second vocal is actually an acapella because I originally mixed the vocals in a separate arrangement and bounced them down as a stereo file um, just to keep the track count down and to make my life easier um, what we've got going on with this vocal is quite a drastic uh, roll off on the bottom end and um, boosting it around 2k as well. I'ma keep it pushing. You can see the analyzer, you can see I'ma keep it pushing. where the frequencies are. That's also being compressed and I've got um, a slap back delay, a tape delay on that. Just to. Uh, I think it kind of enhances the vocal. I can switch it in and out so you can see the difference. I'ma keep it pushing. This is with it off. I'ma keep it pushing. I'ma keep it pushing. I think it makes the sound a bit more exciting. And then, as well as that, we've got the sample delay trick, which I used before, where I delay the right hand side 500 milliseconds. So it's literally the same, like having two vocals, one in each side just helps me fit it in the mix a bit better. I'm a pushing. Other than that, I think we're pretty much there. Well, I'm Vic, one of, the, one of the lead singers on the album Decline and Wizard. Decline, the Wizard. Signing out, motherfuckers. Signing out. Beep beep. Thanks for watching. Buy the album. It's worth it.